Hello everyone and welcome to another video on mechanical vibrations. In the last couple of lectures, we have discussed the techniques required for solving the free and forced vibrations of systems with multiple degrees of freedom. And although the examples we looked at were only um, containing two degrees of freedom, the same techniques can be applied for systems with any arbitrary large number of degrees of freedom as well. And in principle, you have now all the skills for solving these kind of vibration problems. In the next block that I'm going to introduce now, um, we will look at an alternative way of deriving these free and forced vibration responses. And this method is called modal analysis. And it is um, widely applied. It's a very important way of solving problems. And the reason why we are going to look um, into this method is actually twofold. First of all, um, it is a convenient way for solving problems that become large. Let me elaborate on that a little bit. If you think about the problem of solving free vibrations that require for a system of n degrees of freedom to solve a set of um, n equations for n unknowns for the initial positions and uh, solving a set of n equations for n unknowns for solving the initial velocities. So um, as soon as the number of degrees of freedom increases, also the amount of work that you have to do for solving the um, coefficients in the general solution to obtain the specific solution becomes a lot of work. Um, in this new method, we can really look at the contributions of individual natural modes to the solutions and solve them one by one. Okay. Uh, also, for uh, forced vibrations, uh, for systems with a large number of degrees of freedom, finding the inverse of the impedance matrix is a lot of work. And also, if you do this numerically, computing this inverse is um, yeah, computationally inefficient. And using this modal analysis, uh, we, will, yeah, we will see that we, with that, have a tool to determine these responses without that we need to calculate inverses. So um, from a computation point of view, from a mathematical point of view, it's a very attractive way of uh, solving the problem that becomes increasingly beneficial for large problems. The second reason that we are going to look into modal analysis is from a didactical point of view. Um, this block will be the last one about discrete systems. Hereafter, I'm going to look at continuous systems. So these are vibrations in uh, strings, bars, shafts, and beams. And what we will see there is that um, the only way of solving free and forced vibrations is by means of this modal analysis. So there we need this anyway. So I thought that I might as well already introduce this technique in this stage where you can compare the solution you will obtain using this new technique with the solution you have already obtained. Okay, so these are the two reasons. The idea behind modal analysis is that we will um, think of the response of the system as a combination of all natural modes. So we are making, in fact, a coordinate transformation from the um, generalized coordinates, x, y, theta, and so on, to a set of what we will call modal coordinates of natural or natural coordinates. They describe how much a specific mode shape is in the response. So this requires a new way of uh, thinking, and I will explain to you how to do that. Um, the upcoming block contains um, four lectures. In the first lecture, I'm going to um, explain some properties of the natural modes. These are called orthogonality properties that we are going to need in this procedure. So it's a bit of preparation work. Then there will be a lecture on free and forced vibrations. Uh, and finally, I will say something on uh, damping, because so far we only looked at systems that have no damping. And uh, that is for a good reason, 
and I will explain you in this final lecture in this block how to deal with damping. Um, that concludes the analysis of discrete systems, as I already mentioned. So it's really the final thing we have to do on this topic. Um, and then we are done. Then we can look at these continuous systems. But let's do this first, and then I will give a proper introduction to continuous systems um, in, the next, uh, in the next video where you will see me. Okay, uh, have fun, take care, and I will see you next time.